On May 10th, one of the biggest cryptocurrencies to date launched on the world's top exchanges, reaching a peak $300 billion market cap, and then immediately tanked. This token, called Internet Computer, or ICP, grew to be as large by market cap as financial companies such as PayPal, MasterCard, or Bank of America, and has since lost over 90% of its value. It appears that this was not a coincidence or accident, but was a case of misconduct by those who seem most closely connected to ICP and who've been dumping billions of dollars while smaller supporters in retail have been left in the dark watching their investments tank. In this video, I'm going to highlight the ICP blockchain activity that is most suspicious, revealing its possible implications and providing ICP holders with the clarity that they deserve. I'm Miguel Morel. I run a startup called Arkham that builds tools for our users to analyze cryptocurrency networks. Our technology enabled us to figure out what was going on with ICP. Before I get into the details, here are some legal disclaimers. This is a private investigation based on our proprietary analysis, and this video is not financial or legal advice. We recommend our viewers do their own research and reach their own conclusions with the information we provide. For context, ICP is a project started by Definity, an organization based out of Switzerland and Palo Alto. Definity raised hundreds of millions of dollars from top investors to build what they coined the internet computer. The internet computer was supposed to revolutionize computing. Definity was making major headlines. Sites such as TechCrunch were saying ICP was going to rival Amazon and Microsoft. The ICP token listed on Coinbase on May 10th and reached a peak price of nearly $750 on the consumer app, valuing the total token supply at over $350 billion. American and international retail investors bought in. And then this happened. A token dropping over 90% in the first month after launch is highly unusual for a project of this scale. And it's worth asking deeper questions and investigating what happened. ICP dropped more in the first month than any other token in the top 100 by market cap, dropping an absolute 15% more than the second largest drop, Shiba Inu coin. We conducted a comprehensive analysis of the ICP blockchain and what we found causes to believe that insiders have been dumping billions of dollars of ICP on exchanges as the price has tanked from $700 to $30. If our analysis is accurate, we could be looking at one of the most extreme cases of investor mistreatment in the history of crypto launches and in financial markets overall. Here's a chart showing the biggest single ICP deposits to exchanges in the month following listing day. Each of these deposits was worth at least $20 million based on the ICP price at the time of deposit. You can see that they happened as the price continued to fall tremendously. Of course, these weren't the only token transfers from external wallets to exchanges, just the largest. In aggregate, these exchange deposits totaled over $2 billion worth of ICP tokens at the time of deposit. We wanted to find out who these wallets belonged to and what, if any, suspicious behavior was associated with these deposits. We found that they came from the largest addresses with some of the largest holdings of ICP. Addresses that, according to our analysis, we suspect include the Project Treasury and a number of other likely Project Insiders, which possibly includes current or former team, or possibly even venture capitalists. On May 6th, when the ICP blockchain was created, about 470 million ICP tokens were minted. There was one address that received by far the most tokens from the mint, about 100 million, almost a quarter of the total token supply. Because of its size, we think that this is the Definity Treasury. That's the most natural conclusion. What we suspect is the Treasury distributed about a third of its massive holdings, about 34 million ICP to a small number of addresses. Because of the size of these address holdings and what looks like their direct coordination with the Treasury, we suspect that these are project insiders. Most of these transfers from the Treasury to suspected insiders are made within hours of the Coinbase listing. These suspected insiders then deposited over a billion dollars worth of ICP to to exchanges in the weeks post-launch, coinciding with a huge drop in price. The Treasury itself has also dumped over 8 million ICP to exchanges, and about 3 million, worth over a billion dollars at the time, happened on the first day of listing, and another 4.7 million, worth over 300 million, happened just recently on June 15th. The interpretation of what looks like reasonable liquidity provision versus selling by the project, we leave up to the viewer. What makes the situation more suspicious is that the entire time these big holders have been depositing massive amounts of their tokens to exchanges, many of Definity's smaller investors and longtime supporters claim that they have not been able to access tokens Definity promised them, while their holdings lost over 90% of their value. Back in 2017, Definity conducted a seed crowd raise where normal supporters could invest a small amount of money in exchange for the promise of ICP when the token finally launched. 
These early backers received a great price on ICP at the time, just a few cents per token. By launch time, these small seed supporters collectively were owning about a quarter of the ICP supply, a massive amount. If you were a project insider interested in making millions by selling your ICP tokens post-listing, you might not want these supporters to be able to access their tokens, because if they could, their selling could make the price of ICP drop, which would devalue your own holdings if you were not able to sell before them. In response to a community member's tweet a few months before launch, which noted that no vesting schedule had been announced for seed investors, so presumably their tokens would be unlocked. Definity's founder, Dominic Williams himself, noted that seed investor liquidity could cause a price collapse in a tweet before listing. And in fact, seed investors have had to go through what they describe as a very lengthy and convoluted process that made it effectively impossible to claim their tokens. Token claim instructions weren't provided until the day of listing, and the instructions they did get included hundreds of complicated technical steps. The process couldn't even be completed on a Windows computer or newer Macs built with Apple M1 chips. Besides being highly technical, the process appears to have been quite buggy. Many seed investors who could decipher the steps then ran into errors. You can see their desperation in the most popular posts on the Definity forum, where backers voice concerns about everything from token retrieval, network access, and KYC. Amidst all of this, Definity appears to have provided virtually no support other than requesting people submit support tickets. Some users, upon submitting support tickets, were confusingly redirected back to the forum. Things didn't get better after listing day either. In the weeks since listing, the process hasn't been made simpler, and the investors say they have continued to run into bugs that prevent them from accessing their tokens with minimal support from Definity. Definity has over 100 team members and nine figures of funding. There are many questions here about why they didn't allocate adequate resources to make it easier for their longtime supporters to access their tokens, or at least provide them with support in the process. Seed investors suspected that something weird was going on. What they didn't know is that as they were voicing these issues, what we suspect is the Definity Treasury was dumping billions on exchanges and distributing tokens to insiders who were taking similar actions. This kind of behavior isn't just, nor is it above board, and it isn't how other token projects conduct themselves. Let's contrast ICP with another famous token project, Uniswap and their Uni token, currently the 10th ranked token by market cap. When Uniswap launched Uni, they published a single post that clearly detailed token distribution by percentage and token unlocking schedules. Uniswap is not unique. At my previous project reserve, we launched a top 100 token, RSR, but we didn't leave our supporters in the dark. Instead, we provided complete transparency on token distribution and made it incredibly clear that all team, advisor, partner, and seed investor tokens were locked until the mainnet launch. All insiders would have their tokens locked at launch, and they're still locked today, over two years later. Internally, the treasury token deposit process was set up such that any unlocking or movement of tokens from the treasury had a built-in delay and would be accompanied by an explanation for why the tokens were being moved. Arkham has extensively reviewed Definity's public communication and have found no similarly clear comprehensive breakdown of token distribution or unlocking. What we have is this uninformative slide. All it does is list a few categories of holder, no breakdown of holders by percentage, no discussion of how unlocking will work for each category. There's some discussion of dissolved delays or network neurons, but how this will actually play out for each category of holders is not made clear. Finally, more than two weeks after the launch, in response to a community member's request for token allocation and unlocking info, Dominic Williams revealed that the Definity Foundation didn't have vesting. Definity did not follow the playbook of other successful projects. Instead, it appears that they quietly allowed the Treasury and insiders to send billions of dollars of ICP to exchanges, while making it extremely difficult for their longtime supporters to access the tokens as they were promised. The result might be seen as one of the biggest scandals the crypto and financial world has ever seen. Uncovering activity like this is one of the reasons I founded Arkham. My years in crypto made me realize there was a need in the crypto world for better information about cryptocurrencies and their users, so I started my current company, Arkham Intelligence, which provides data on blockchain activities and the entities behind it, so our users can make better decisions about how to navigate the crypto and trading world. With Arkham, Holders that weren't in on any of this suspicious activity would have known about massive exchange deposits, enabling them to adjust their positions and protect their investments. I'm deeply concerned by the circumstances surrounding ICP and Definity, and I'm really sorry to any holder who's been negatively affected by the aftermath of this token listing. 
I believe that in order for crypto to progress and reach more widespread adoption, there should be more transparency about token launches and their structure. That's part of what our platform allows our users to do. So if you'd like to learn more or work with us, head to our website at arkhamintelligence.com and reach out.